Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing the Anchor Make M5C. Last year, Anchor Make launched the first fast printing bed slinger, the M5, on Kickstarter. It became the most successful Kickstarter 3D printer campaign. The normal retail price of the M5 is $700, which might not be accessible for everyone. This year, they launched the M5C, which looks very similar to the M5, but doesn't have the touchscreen, AI camera, or the double belt on the Y-axis, but it comes with an upgraded hot end, and the maximum nozzle temperature has been increased from 260 to 300 degrees Celsius, and the flow rate has also been increased from 26 to 35 millimeters cubed per second, and it's priced at $399. This pricing strategy is very aggressive, so let's take a look at what we can get from this new M5C. This is a bed slinger with a print volume of 220 by 220 by 250 or a typical Ender 3 size. The motion system uses palm wheels. The claim top speed is 500 mm per second with 5k acceleration, which I won't take too seriously, but I will still test it. The normal printing speed is 250 mm per second with a 2.5k acceleration, which sounds more reasonable. The dual Z axis is controlled using two independent stepper drivers, allowing it to level the gantry automatically. The auto bed leveling uses a strain gauge and nozzle combination, and there are no manual leveling knobs under the bed. The extruder is a direct drive with a reverse Bowden tube that works as a filament guide. The hot end is a high flow all metal hot end with a maximum flow rate of 35 millimeters cubed per second. The maximum nozzle temperature is 300 degrees Celsius and it comes with a brass nozzle. It has belt tensioners on the X and Y axis and it's using better quality timing belts. The part cooling fan is a dual 3010 blower. The print surface is a double sided PEI spring steel sheet with two stoppers at the end of the bed for easy alignment. This machine uses a one-piece cast aluminum base, which you don't see in other bed slingers. The firmware is their own and is based on Clipper. Input Shaper and Linear Advanced are using pre-calibrated values. The OS runs on an Ingenic M200 processor, which is a dual core with a 1.2 GHz high performance core and a 300 MHz low powered core. It's not as powerful as the Ingenic X2000 chip on the M5 or the Creality K1, which are dual 1.2 GHz cores with a 240 MHz low-powered core, as the M5C doesn't have to work with an AI camera or control a touchscreen. The stepper drivers are TMC2209 Stylent drivers with sensorless homing, so you won't find any limit switches on any axis. Without the touchscreen, you have to control the printer using the app or use a single button or USB drive for basic operations. You can customize the button. By default, a single click is to print the newest file on the USB drive, double click is to reprint the last job, and long presses for auto bed leveling or auto home, depending on how you configure it. I would like to thank Anchor Mick for sending out this machine to review and for sponsoring our channel. With that, let's get started. The packaging of this machine uses recycled laser cut foam. The instructions are pretty simple. The gantry is stored separately on a middle layer and the base is divided by another layer of foam. Every single part of the machine is well protected. We have the base, the gantry, a filament holder, some bolts, a power cord, and a pretty nice toolbox. Putting this machine together is super easy. Put the gantry on top of the base, mount the filament holder at the back, and finally, connect one ribbon cable from the gantry to the base. Since this machine has no screen, we need to download the Anchor Make app and control it with our phone. The setup process is pretty standard. Agree to whatever it says, register an account with your email address, add the printer to your account by selecting the model, and scan the QR code at the back of the machine. You can enter the Wi-Fi SSID and password to connect to your local network. After that, give it a name or just use the default name. It will then check for the latest firmware and download and install the updates. Okay, we can now start with auto-leveling. It will heat up the nozzle to 175 degrees Celsius and the bed to 60 degrees Celsius. The machine will start auto-homing and clean the nozzle at the front of the print surface. After that, it will check both sides of the gantry and level it. Then, it will probe the bed to create a mesh. 
This 49 point leveling process is going to take around 7 to 8 minutes. After that, we can load some filament. I will start with the two rolls of orange PLA plus that Anchor makes scent with the printer. When the temperature is reached, it will push out some yellow colored filament, which I believe means that they tested the machine in the factory before shipping. Let's select a sample file from their server. I will start with the 17 minute Benchy. The speed of this model will be 500 millimeters per second. Just continue and it will start downloading the model. There is some residue on the nozzle, but I'll leave it and see if the machine can wipe it off on the front of the bed. Okay, the residue was cleaned, but when it tries to relevel the gantry before every print starts, it also leaves a tiny bit of filament on the bed. It looks like the offset is set a bit too low. The first layer is squeezed down more than I would prefer, but I will just let it print. Since this print is running at the machine's top speed of 500 millimeters per second, I will check the sound level. The printer is pretty quiet, or is at least quieter than other fast bed slingers I have tested so far. It stays around the mid 50s in decibels. The print finished in 16 minutes and 48 seconds. The result is not bad for a high speed bed slinger, but the surface isn't very clean and we can see some ringing. The cooling at the front is also imperfect, and there are cooling issues in different areas. Generally, I won't take a 500 millimeters per second speed too seriously on a bed slinger, so I will slice another benchy using the default profile. The speed is now set to 250 millimeters per second. The outer wall is set to 150, and the first layer is set to 50. The acceleration is set to 2500 millimeters per second squared, which sounds reasonable. The printing temperature of the first layer is set to 230 degrees Celsius, and the rest is 200 degrees Celsius, which is interesting as the first layer is printed slower, and we normally set it to a lower temperature than the other layers. This profile seems to be doing something different, but let's just print it without changing anything and see the result. The print finished in 45 minutes, which is still pretty fast compared to a standard 1 hour and 50 minute Benchy from an under 3. Let's compare the print quality of the 17 minute and this 45 minute Benchy. The difference is obvious. The layers are better, the surface is cleaner, and the cooling in multiple areas is also better. I also can't see any cooling issues at the front, and the back is also nicer. So, I would say this printer can still print at 500 millimeters per second with an acceptable quality. But if you want a decent print, you should stick with the default profile at 250 millimeters per second. I will also try some other filament to print both 500 and 250 millimeters per second benches and see how they look compared to the Anchor Make filament. For the regular speed 45 minute ones, printed at 250 millimeters per second, since the voxel PLA is almost the same color, the result is also very similar. The one printed with Anger Make filament is also slightly cleaner. For the Sunlu Recycle PLA, as black reflects light differently, it doesn't look as good as the other two. However, when looking at the real objects, the difference is not that big. The cooling for all three benches is good at the front. 
For the 17-minute 500 millimeters per second ones, the voxel PLA and sun loose string a little bit more than the anchor make filament. The surface quality is similar, and all of them have ringing. The cooling at the front is also not perfect. The anchor make one is slightly better, and the Sunlu Recycle PLA may require more cooling than the other two. Next, I will print the Robo Alpaca from Prusa using Tronxy Tricolor Silk PLA. The print finished in 6 hours and 25 minutes, and these are four different angles of the model. The print quality is in line with other fast printing machines, but let's do a head-to-head -head comparison. Compared to the Chidi X Max 3, which printed 40% faster with the default profile at a 300 ml per second speed with a 10k acceleration, the M5C surface looks a bit cleaner. The ghosting of the text is also more obvious on the X Max 3. Compared to the Prusa MK4, of course, the print by the MK4 which took almost 8 hours is even cleaner. In terms of quality, the MK4 is still the best so far, but the print time is almost twice as much compared to other fast printers. The one printed by the Creality K1 is similar to the Chidi X Max 3, with some ghosting on the text and ringing on the surface. So, the Anger Make M5C still looks better. Finally, when comparing to the Bamboo Lab P1P, the surface for both of them are similar, but the P1P looks slightly better. Then, I will print my own honeycomb box for retraction testing. This box took around two and a half hours to finish. The speed is in line with other fast printing machines, as when printing this tiny honeycomb box with such an excessive amount of retraction, using 2.5k or 10k acceleration won't make much of a difference. Let's take a look at the same model printed by other machines. The Prusa MK4 and Creality K1 are not as good as the others, as the MK4 has too many broken patterns and the K1 has too much stringing. The Chidi X Max 3, Bamboo Lab P1P, and the Anchor Make M5C all printed well. However, the patterns printed by the Bamboo Lab look a bit different even though the 3D model is the exact same. This may be caused by how the slicer sliced the model. So, the Anchor Make M5C and the Chidi X Max 3 printed this model with better results. After that, I will do some clearance tests. I will print this infinite cube with Anchor Make White PLA Plus. The result is perfect, the cube can move smoothly, and I have no complaints. As the easy clearance test has now been passed, I will try a harder one, the number slider. The first layer is once again squeezed a bit too low, but I can still see some gaps between the tiles, so I'll just let it finish and see. Thank <laughs> you. 
The top is perfect, but as the first layer is squeezed a bit too low, the frame and the tiles around the edges are stuck, so we need to peel them off or use a blade to cut them apart. Besides that, the center tiles can slide smoothly. Next, I will print a 200 by 200 by 220 trash can with PETG. I will print at a 100 millimeters per second speed with a 0.3 millimeter layer height. I won't use vase mode as a trash can of this size will break too easily with just one wall. I will manually set it to print three walls, three bottoms, zero top, and zero infill, so this will make a more rigid trash can. I want a perfect first layer this time when printing PETG with the 245 degrees Celsius temperature nozzle and a 90 degrees Celsius heated bed, I will manually move the Z offset up by 0.1 millimeters. The first layer looks perfect after the Z offset is adjusted. The trash can is awesome, the surface is clean, the bottom and the interior look good, apart from a tiny bit of stringing inside. PETG sticks to the nozzle a bit, but this type of stringing is easy to clean up and the result is pretty good. Then, I will try some TPU. On my first try, the nozzle clogged. I remove the clogged filament, and it shows that the extruder is pushing too fast, and the filament just can't be melted quickly enough. As I just used the default profile and selected TPU filament without changing anything, I took a look at the slicer profile and found that it was still trying to print at 250 millimeters per second. As this slicer does not support volumetric speed like the Prusa slicer, Bamboo Studio, or Orca slicer, I have to manually change everything to 50 millimeters per second and restart the print. This time, the extrusion is perfect, and the surface, body, and bottom all look good. Next, I will use ABS to print a crate. As the ABS odor is bad, I will also use the Vivor smoke purifier to work as an air filter. The print didn't warp and stuck perfectly to the bed when I applied glue, but it can't avoid layer separation as the ambient temperature is unstable, especially as I used another smoke purifier to circulate the air around. However, the extruder handles retraction really well. The patterns are printed well with just a tiny bit of stringing. The maximum nozzle temperature of this machine can reach 300 degrees Celsius, but it only comes with a brass nozzle, so I won't try printing any abrasive filament like nylon carbon fiber. But I can try to print with polycarbonate. I will print a set of needle nose pliers from 3dprintedhardware.com. 
on my first try. Even though I have printed this model many times, I still forgot to flip the bottom of the pliers to print it with support. So this area is printed in the air, but surprisingly it still works. However, the part is not straight, so I had to reprint the bottom and add some support. This time the part was printed perfectly, and when I put them together, they fit nicely and are fully functional. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. 1. The print quality is good, especially when printing at 250mm per second with a 2.5k acceleration. Printing at the top speed of 500mm per second doesn't create the best quality, but it's still acceptable. Nonetheless, for the best results, I would recommend sticking with the normal 250mm per second print speed. 2. The overall build quality is excellent. It boasts a more rigid frame than most bed slingers on the market. You won't find a one-piece solid cast aluminum base or modular independent dual-C axis controlled by two stepper drivers in any other bed slingers. The small details are well polished, so you won't see any sharp corners or rough finishes like on other budget machines. 3. The assembly process is straightforward. You only need to connect the gantry to the base, mount the filament holder, and attach one ribbon cable. The cable management is also well organized. 4. The single button is customizable. By default, it is set up with specific functions. One click to print the latest file on the USB drive, double click to reprint the last job, and a long press for auto home or auto bed leveling. However, there aren't many options available for you to choose from when it comes to customizing its functions. 5. The app is excellent. The design is reasonable, clean, and functions effectively. I have a few different apps installed in my phone, including Ultimaker, Bamboo Lab, and Creality Cloud. I would say that this Anchor Make app is the best I have used so far. 6. The build plate is higher quality than average. The alignment stopper at the back allows you to more easily align the bed perfectly, but it would be even better if the stopper was made of metal, as this would stop damage from the heated nozzle when pressure is applied to the print head while removing clogged filament. 7. The printer is quiet even when printing at 500 mm per second, the sound level stays in the mid-50s, which is totally acceptable to me. Now for the cons. 1. The hardware, network printing workflow, and the mobile app of this machine are very well done. However, the Anchor Make Slicer does not match that high quality level. Despite being in beta for over a year, some fundamental features are still absent. For example, adding manual support, automatic placement of the object's flat surface on the bed, and the ability to move the object below the print bed to skip a few layers for a flatter bottom are all missing. 2. I can't determine how to upload a collection of my frequently used G-code files and save them on the 8GB onboard EMMC storage. Currently, I can only export and save them onto a USB Type-C drive. Additionally, after printing a file over the network, only the most recent file is stored as cache. This enables you to reprint it by double pressing the button, but unfortunately the printer doesn't save more than one file on the EMMC as cache or stored on the USB drive along with previously printed files for future use. 3. As this machine uses the nozzle to probe the bed, by default, the printer will heat up to the first layer printing temperature to probe the bed. The default PLA profile in the slicer is set to 230 degrees Celsius for the first layer, so it's going to probe the bed at 230 degrees Celsius for homing and gantry leveling, and it's going to leave marks on the bed most of the time. 4. This machine doesn't claim to have auto Z offset, but after the initial auto bed leveling, it doesn't show any instructions for the Z offset. When the print starts, it seems it just set the Z offset to zero. I didn't adjust it as the first layer of the default print profile is set to 0.14mm, so even though the distance between the nozzle and the bed is zero and it's squeezed a bit low, it still works. In order to achieve a better result, I think you may still need to move it up a little bit. 5. The dual part cooling fans are a bit weak, but they're still good enough to print at 250mm per second. However, when printing at 500 milliliters per second, a set of stronger cooling fans are needed, but of course this will increase the noise level tremendously. 
6. Using palm wheels as the motion system on a fast printing machine is not a good choice as they more easily wear out compared to linear rods or linear rails. 7. The maximum nozzle temperature of this printer is 300 degrees Celsius, but it didn't come with any hardened steel nozzles or even have any available for purchase on their website. As a result, for now, you can't print nylon carbon fiber or other abrasive filaments even with this high temperature hot end. Besides that, I would also like to give some suggestions to AnchorMake. 1. This machine only comes with one USB Type-C port for a USB drive. For a PC user like me, I have more than 50 USB drives, but none of them are Type-C. Including a Type-C USB drive in the package would be more convenient. Moreover, incorporating a USB hub would offer greater flexibility, allowing users to use various USB drives. This setup would open up the possibility of using an old phone as a dedicated touchscreen, charging it and connecting a USB webcam to monitor print jobs. Such an addition would also introduce new customers to other Anchor Make products. 2. The app is truly impressive, but a concern arises when I want to use an old phone as a dedicated screen while also having the app installed on my primary phone for notifications or job monitoring when I'm away. In this scenario, the app logs out the other device. Enhancing the experience could involve allowing users to determine the number of devices that can be logged in at the same time, or offering the choice to remember a device's login status. This would eliminate the need for users to repeatedly enter their username and password with each use. In conclusion, the build quality of this AnchorMake M5C is higher than most Betzlingers in the market, the details are well polished, the print quality is decent, the print speed is fairly fast, the noise level makes it one of the quietest fast printing Betzlingers, and the network feature and app all work well. But for the slicer, while the user interface is acceptable, the decision to fork Cura might not be a good idea due to the numerous limitations of Cura itself. In my experience, I have not come across any instances where forks or skin versions of Cura performed well. For now, my preferred workflow on this printer is to use Orca Slicer, which is a fork of the Prusa Slicer in Bamboo Studio, which includes profiles for the AnchorMake M5 and M5C. I use Orca Slicer to slice the model, copy the file to a USB drive, and press the only button on the machine to start the print, which is still okay, but this workflow sacrifices the Wi-Fi feature entirely. But the good thing is, Anchor makes that they will launch a new slicer based on the Prusa Slicer soon, so I'm hoping that the new slicer will be improved and function better. That's all I wanted to share about this machine. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.